So, uh, we are talking about the Java Worlds that was conceived by James Gosling, Patrick Dofton, Chris Worth, Ed Frank, and Mike Saradan at Sun Microsystem in 91. Your first name was Oak in 1995. Initially, it was uh, designed to focus. Uh, with the consumer electronic items like microwave ovens, remote controls and a lot of such like home appliances. But today the Java is widely used as internet programming language. And the buzzwords it has is it's simple, object oriented, distributed, robust, secure, portable, interpreted, multi-threaded, dynamic, and architecture natural. I'm sorry, architecture neutral. How it is simple? The Java simplifies the programming experience by removing many rarely used, poorly understood, confusing features of C++. There is no need of using pointers, structures, operator overloadings. There is nothing you can uh, even you cannot uh, uh, design a single program without having a class. I mean, the Java is uh, object oriented programming language. Okay, and we cannot do a single program without the OOP concept. It is distributed language, that means it has a networking capabilities. Java makes it easy to work with resources across a network. Create network based application using client server or multi tier architecture. JTV supports very large scale distributed applications. The Java is robust. Java puts a great care for early checking of possible problems and further checking at runtime to eliminate the error prone situations. It doesn't allow the programmer to use pointer and hence gets rid of the possibility of overwriting the memory and data corruption. Java enables the construction of virus free tamper free system that means it is highly secure language java has a byte code verifier that is a fixed part of java runtime system that reads byte code modules to make sure that it obeys all the basic rules of java and it cannot cause certain type of internal errors like overflow or underflow of operand stack over its execution. Java is portable. Just like all other languages, Java is also portable. That means the source code of Java can be uh, compiled and run on different operating systems. I mean, it can run on different platform. The compiler is written in NCC and the program is portable so that it can run on any operating system whether it is windows or linux or mac os it's okay just one thing is required and that is the java virtual machine the program is interpreted the java virtual machine or java interpreter is the very important piece of java installation java programs are portable only to those platform where java interpreter is available java byte codes are translated on the fly to native machine instruction and not stored anywhere jvm knows how to interact with the intermediate byte codes i mean the byte code makes the java platform independent also as a multi-threaded we cannot imagine a single program in java without multi-threading because if we have at least one thread uh, that is a main program then there will be a daemon thread running inside uh, the jvm 
for memory management that is Kavas collector so it is not possible to make a independent uh, it is not possible to make a single program without the concept of multi-threading it makes the multi-threading multi-threading concept makes the independent execution of more than one tiny processes concurrently it's a dynamic inheritance by subclassing passes both a set of methods and their implementation from superclass to subclass. Reference variable of an interface can hold the object of all those classes which implements this interface. Hence, if a method or if uh, a constructor is having a reference variable of superclass or interface, any object a, any object of class which is implementing that interface or which is extending that class can be passed to such methods or constructor so at the runtime it will be decided that which method on which object has to be executed this feature may, makes it uh, dynamic A Java class can implement multiple interfaces but can only inherit from a single superclass. That means a class can be uh, a member, uh, a class can be a subclass of some other class, but it can inherit more than one interface. Just like in the real world, a, a, a person has one father but a lot of teachers. A person inherits a lot of things from his father but to have some extra qualities the person goes to different teachers in the similar way a single class can inherit one class as a super class and can implement more than one interfaces to make uh, implementation of different qualities in it the Java is architectural neutral. Java programs are written for the JVM, not for the operating system. So, wherever the JVM is, it is doesn't matter that which operating system it is working on, the Java program will run. Java converts the human readable source file into platform independent code called bytecode or jcode. JVM interprets the bytecode and executes the program in a way compatible with the current hardware architecture and operating system. A single Java program can run on all Java supported operating system, which fulfills the sun's motto of saying write once, use everywhere. Don't need to distribute source code to end users. Just compile and create the byte scores and then transfer the bytecode to a client that's it so and what's the object oriented programming concept the first one word is object an object is a discrete entity which has well defined attributes and behaviors attributes properties or characteristics or data member or state all are referring to the same thing just like a one person if is an account holder then it the attributes for the same person may be name date of birth designation address and so on however if the same person is an army man then its attribute becomes chest height weight eyesight and so on behaviors for the bank account holder the same person will work on account opening making deposit and getting withdrawal etc however the same person if is an army it will work like alert fire providing security and so on classification objects with common attributes behaviors and their relationship with other objects are classified into a group called class and process is classification different type of bicycle like 18 inch 
24 inch sports cycle of different makers can be classified as bicycle. Bike, scooter, etc. can be classified as motorcycle. Generalization and inheritance. Generalization is the process of abstraction. For example, two wheeler can be referred as a bicycle or a scooter or bike or any vehicle with two wheel. Inheritance is the process of extending the functionality of a class by defining a new class that inherits all the features of existing class as well as has some features of its own. Polymorphism Taking no care for shape and size but the most important thing is to take care about the name that is same name for same function. If add is used for addition then no matter that there is addition between two numbers to float numbers to a string to character or anything the addition does the addition that means on the basis of the passing parameter the addition method will work differently it may be of two types compile time polymorphism and run time polymorphism Next one is encapsulation and data protection to put something in a capsulate or protection. Data protection from programmer happen, not from user, so that no accidental error can occur by programmer in global and local variable name conflict. To refer data of another class, public accessor methods should be used. Platform independency. We know that the C program can be done, can be compiled and run on any of the operating system. It may be DOS, Unix, Linux, Windows. But the problem is we have to give, we have to pass the source code of C program to any of the operating system. However, if the programmer is working on Windows, and making a software for a client which who is using Linux then the problem is programmer has to send its source code to the client and in such case we have to compile the program each time when we need to change the platform that is whenever we need a different system uh, we have whenever we need to run our program on different system we have to supply the source code and recompile so that it can work on different environment sun has made a jitc that is just in time compiler just in time compiler is responsible for execution of program after compilation but in this approach one major drawback occurred that programmer has to send their source code once again so valuable thing is going to send on net also hence a new approach was required here GITC was available for all the operating system but the problem is programmer has to send their source code so Sun made a new approach put a compiler between the programmer and the user that compile the program into the intermediate code named as bytecode which is an encrypted form. This byte code is sent to the client machine. Now, JITC with some changes becomes JVM on client machine and can run the byte code. And now this approach becomes uh, useful and now it is in real life. So, Java, Java source code is converted after compilation into byte code that is intermediate code that makes it platform independent and is interpreted and executed by platform specific JVMs. A language is said to be platform independent if it has its own runtime environment for execution of its application and the application developed in the language doesn't directly use the features of native operating system.